Welcome to Inside Hawaii Real Estate, a show dedicated to providing up-to-date information and news to Hawaii home buyers, sellers, and investors. I'm Will Tanaka with my co-host, business partner, and wife, Leone Lam, a realtor with over 20 years experience in various leadership roles in the Hawaii real estate industry. Thanks, Will. Will is a lawyer and the former head of a Hawaii title and Estro company. And we are full-time realtors working as a team to bring you the latest in Hawaii real estate. And today we have an exciting show for you today. We have a very special guest all the way from the island of Maui, Aaron Clapper. And we're going to cover a lot of ground today to talk about Hawaiian language, Hawaiian heritage, the Maui culture, and Maui real estate. So, Leone, it's going to be a jam-packed show. And, you know, Erin Clapper is a proud graduate of Maui High School, and then she went on to attend the University of Hawaii at Manoa, and she got a couple of degrees, one in Hawaiian language and the other in fashion, design, and merchandising. And then now she's the principal broker at Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate Advantage Realty Valley Isle over in Maui, and she's incredibly passionate about the Hawaiian language and helping island families come home. Welcome, Erin. Hey, aloha, Leone. Aloha, Will. Thank you so much for having me on today. I'm so excited to be here and so excited to share. Thank you. All right. Welcome, Erin. <laughs> Welcome and aloha. So when did you first start connecting with the Hawaiian language? Is it something that you grew up speaking at home or can you tell us more about that? Oh, I wish I grew up speaking Hawaiian language. My family did not speak any Hawaiian. I think it started in middle school. I had a social studies teacher who didn't have any Hawaiian. She was this Japanese lady, but she was super passionate about the Hawaiian culture and the Hawaiian language. And I think seventh grade was when I had her. And that was when I started becoming a little bit more interested in my, in my heritage, in my culture and, and in the Hawaiian language. That is so cool. And, you know, I just read an article about a small Hawaiian immersion school right in Wailuku, Maui, and they're actually providing families that of children that attend the school and the community with classes on Hawaiian language, on grammar, on values, on culture in general. And um, I think that they're doing that to support the children's learnings at home as well as in the classroom. And I thought that was really cool. And it's clear that we're seeing a resurgence in Hawaiian language, much more so over the last several years. What are your thoughts on that? It's so exciting. You know, the Hawaiian culture has a pretty um, tumultuous history, particularly with, uh, well, including the language, right? Back in um, the late 1800s, the Hawaiian language was banned. And could you imagine that the language itself prior to it being a written language was an oral language. So the example that I like to give is, you know, I make a pumpkin crunch um, dessert every Christmas, right? And so every Christmas I get out my recipe and I'm like, okay, I know exactly what ingredients to have, what I need, how long to cook it for. Uh, but could you imagine in a, in a culture where everything, where the language is oral, I would have to remember not only that recipe every single Christmas, but everything about my life. So, you know, back then from it, being banned as an oral language. And now with the resurgence, I think back um, in, 19, in 1978, the state of Hawaii finally recognized the Hawaiian language as another language of the state, which is incredible. There have been so many great um, milestones reached with um, the creation of the Ahapuna Naleo, which is sort of the preschool immersion program. Then they went on to creating uh, an immersion program that allowed kindergartners all the way through high schoolers to complete their education all in Hawaiian. And then in 2002, we had the first uh, college degree earned from the University of Hawaii at Hilo. And then in 2012, kind of one of my favorite more recent things is the state of Hawaii declared February as uh, Olalo Hawaii Month. So businesses, it certainly gained popularity over the years, but businesses across the state participate. You'll see signs up where they'll have some of their major items labeled in Hawaiian. People make an effort to speak more Hawaiian. There's tons of events. So it's been so empowering and um, exciting to see this resurgence of the language. Wow, that, that is fantastic. And, you know, in terms of the Hawaiian language, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, transplants or visitors. Uh, of course, you know, we say aloha, mahalo, uh, you know, whether it's in an email. 
But in terms of the proper pronunciation of some of the words, yeah, can, you, can we, you know, take a deeper dive into maybe some of the words that, uh, you know, we encounter and maybe even the, uh, how, how many letters and vowels and consonants are there in the Hawaiian language? Yeah, we can breeze through this. We'll pull up the first slide that just demonstrates the Hawaiian language is made up of 13 letters. Um, an okina and a kahako. So the okina is uh, a glottal stop and the kahako sort of makes you elongate your vowel. So these are the, this is the Hawaiian alphabet. And then the next slide, I've got a couple just common words, um, words like kane. So the pronunciation is super important, right? So the first word, people always say kane, but you can hear the difference when I say kane versus kane. So that's the kahako, where it elongates that vowel. Um, one of the tricks of pronouncing Hawaiian words is to make sure you say every single letter. So I think a very common word that people know is lei, uh, but you probably hear it as lei versus lei. So if you can hear the difference where I pronounce that last letter, that last I, that's actually the correct way to, to pronounce it. And then a lot of people say lani. It's actually lani, so heaven. And then Hawaii, that's what we probably hear most often. The correct pronunciation is actually Hawaii. So if you just make an effort to pronounce every single letter, that'll set you up for success. Wow, that was awesome. Like, so how, what role does the Hawaiian language play in your life as a realtor? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's a pretty incredible thing to be a realtor. We get to help people, you know, find their dream homes and start their families and just help set them up for a life that's just full of great memories and, um, you know, being part of a community. And so for me, it's really important that whether I'm helping local families or whether I'm helping families that are moving here from the mainland, it's really, really important to me that they find that connection between the language, the culture, and the people. So whether it's um, encouraging uh, my clients to understand the history of their neighborhood or how to pronounce their street name correctly, um, I usually like to make sure that I educate them just a little bit on now that they're going to be part of this community, it's their responsibility to be a part of it and to, you know, play a respectful role in, in being here in Hawaii. And Erin, you know, just going back to the first slide, uh, was there only like 12 letters in the uh, Hawaiian yes. alphabet? So 12, and then the Okina is sometimes considered the 13th, um, the 13th letter. Oh, wow. Okay. Got it. Got it. And I then do it, have a little yeah. slide that has a couple commonly pronounced um, neighborhoods here. Ooh, That's always yes. kind of fun. <laughs> All right. So this will be a little pronunciation um, tutorial for you folks. So most often we hear people say Honolulu, right? They, they say, oh, we're going to go to Honolulu for vacation. The correct pronunciation, because it's H-O-N-O, -O, is Honolulu. So again, just pronouncing every single letter. Um, this is a fun one. I think this is probably the word that gets the most action, right? The like-like highway. So actually, like, like. Um, this one, Hana, uh, you know, if you've ever been on the road to Hana on Maui, it's that windy road, takes you two and a half hours, it's worth it, you get to see so many beautiful um, waterfalls and ponds, and by the end of it, you're getting the most delicious banana bread you've ever had if you stop at the little grandma's uh, store on the side of the road, um, but just to explain how to pronounce the difference, so Hana, or people say Hana, Ooh, I try and, Hana, no, 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 let's practice this one, Hana. <laughs> And then Haleakala, I like to pronounce that one because, of course, I'm here on Maui, but Haleakala, I hear that a lot. <laughs> Haleakala. And then I think I already talked about Hawaii. So we hear Hawaii a lot, but the correct pronunciation, Hawaii. You know, you named, you named a lot of landmarks and things on the island of Maui. And you talked about Haleakala, you talked about the banana bread at the end of Hana Road <laughs> and things like that. So like, what else do you feel like makes Maui so special? Yeah, you know, if we can pull up that map of Maui, Maui is kind of broken up into six different general areas. Um, we have the North Shore, 
East Maui, which is the Hana area, up country, which is Kula, Pukalani, Makawao. Uh, we have South Maui, which a lot of people who have come here on vacation are familiar with. You have Kihei and Wailea in South Maui. Uh, you have Central Maui, which is where the airport is, Costco, Target, Walmart, and then West Maui. So you're Lahaina, Ka'anapali, and Napili. So, you know, what I love about Maui is that there are so many different um, demographics. There are so many different uh, climates, different um, uh, environments, you really have the best of both worlds. If you were here, let's say the beginning of January, where it was really, really cold and you caught a little bit of snow on the top of Haleakala, where else could you go where in a matter of two and a half or three hours, you could be from standing on the top of a mountain in snow to all the way down in 80 degree water on the beach. I don't think there are very many places like that, but if you catch a snowy, a snowy day on Maui, that's possible. But, you know, we have so much to offer here. There are fantastic restaurants, fantastic beaches. There are amazing hikes. Um, and I really do think that part of what makes Maui so special is the people. Um, you know, a lot of times people who are not from here will say Maui will either um, uh, you'll either love Maui or it'll spit you up as uh, uh, Fit you out whole if, if you weren't from you know if it wasn't meant to be for you to be here and so I do believe that you know I also tell my clients that Maui is what you make of it you know are you exploring are you getting to know are you being respectful and if so then you know Maui could certainly work for you and we'd be happy to to have you here as long as you're playing your part in the community but I, I love this island um if you haven't been, I would encourage you to come and visit. I also have a list of um, fun things to do if you need any recommendations for best bakery or um, best Thai restaurant or best hike. <laughs> you know, every time I visit um, Maui, I, I do feel like, I mean, it's bigger. I mean, it's a big island, but um, at, at the same time, there's only like two or 250,000 people. Is that right, on Maui? Compared sure. to a lot of people, <laughs> there's over like. Uh, well, I think you're better with uh, uh, population stats than I am. <laughs> okay, that, that's okay. But I, I know in terms of population, Ma Maui is you know much smaller in terms of numbers than Oahu, yeah, and th and I always feel the community involvement. Uh, you, is there like a favorite neighborhood that you, you know that that you love that you would recommend, or you know, is it just too difficult for you to choose? Yeah, people ask me this a lot. What's your favorite? What's your favorite place on Maui? Where would you want to live? Well, I live where I would want to live. <laughs> I, it's not for everyone though. So my husband and I, we live in a neighborhood called Piiholo. It's up country. Um, the lots up there are larger. There, it's more ag, more rural. We just got internet a couple years ago. <laughs> that's how rural it is. Um, we have a little a little less than an acre, and that's considered a small piece of land where we live. So that's definitely more country. Um, you have Kula. Kula is this beautiful um, area where you also have some really large lots, but the temperature is lovely. Most people have fireplaces in their home. You get this beautiful, expansive view of central Maui and often, you know, um, uh, expansive ocean views as well. If you like the beach, Kihei and Wailea are probably for you. You're probably no more than a five minute drive to a sandy beach, no matter where you live in South Maui. That's one of the awesome, awesome things about, about the Kihei and Wailea area. Central Maui, you know, this is kind of the hub. So we have um, just a lot of families that live in Central Maui, right? You have your county buildings, your courthouses, your, your main shopping in terms of Target, Costco, that sort of thing. And then let's see, West Maui. Ooh, West Maui, you kind of have a little bit of everything. Still lots of hotels, a little touristy, but you also have some great beaches, some great snorkeling. So I, if I could pick a favorite, I think it would be where I live, but I don't think I have a bad thing to say about the rest of the island either. Hey, Erin, okay, so am I pronouncing Makawao or is it with a V? <laughs> well, what's the correct way to pronounce it? Oh, that's such a good question. It's actually a common question. Do you pronounce the V as a W or a V? Uh, do you pronounce the W as a V sound or a W sound? There's not really um, a set uh, set of rules necessarily, but it's Makawao. So uh, with a W, you're correct. All right. Got it right. So I mean, <laughs> One point for you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to kind of just go back to Hawaiian language because, you, you know, if I say Hawaii, 
you know, with a V, I, I, you know, is that, I, I feel like sometimes maybe that's, am I saying it correctly or is, is that offending, you know, um, the Hawaiian language? I mean, yeah, sure. Would you be okay with, you know, saying for me to say, or anyone, you know, like a visitor saying Hawaii? Yeah. So what do you I think about that? Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't speak for everyone, but I could certainly give you my own opinion. And that would yes. be that if you were trying to pronounce it, if the intentions behind you trying to pronounce it were respectful and you were doing it with the intention to honor the culture and the language, I'm all for it. I don't think I would be offended. Now, if you were making a mockery of it or, uh, you know, doing it with some sort of negative energy, maybe not so much. But if you were really making an honest effort to um, to do your part and to play a positive role in it, 100 percent, I'm for it. Yeah. And actually, this, <laughs> <laughs> and this is just complete off the cuff question. But, um, you know, our kids, when we do Shaka. It's um, our kids are saying, you know, hey, you're kind of doing it wrong. You, you know, so you're saying hi or bye to someone. How do you do your shaka? <laughs> so, well, this did you, <laughs> you, were, you did not prep on this question, okay? Sorry Here's about that. Thing, Bill. I don't shaka. I think I have the oh. worst shaka in the world. My husband mocks me all the time. So, I don't shaka. Like, this is my shaka, like the front forward. My husband will just laugh at this. So I don't think there's a right way. I think as long as you're showing shaka with aloha, you can't go wrong. Thanks for that oh. question, Will. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, what is the Maui real estate market like, Erin? Can you tell us about that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, during COVID, like a lot of places, particularly here in Hawaii, we, we saw some unbelievable price points. It was sort of the perfect storm with the low interest rates. We saw quite a few people relocating to Maui because they were coming from areas on the West Coast where they were stuck inside LA. A lot of people from Colorado moved here. They were like, we're stuck inside. We can work from home. Why wouldn't we want to be stuck in a place like Maui instead? So we saw just uh, an astronomical increase in price. And, you know, while that was great, if you were a realtor, it wasn't, it, it's not the best thing. It's not my favorite thing, right? It's not that we don't want to welcome people to Maui, but it's, um, the price is significantly increased. Um, I do have a couple slides. We can bring up that first statistic slide. Yeah, thank you. Single family home. So uh, the July stats were not out yet, but this was from June. So the uh, median sales price for single family homes last year 2022 was 1252 million 252,000 and then you can see there was a little bit of a decline so the median uh price for single family homes for June 2023 was a million 7,000 and then year to date it kind of evened out a little bit more so year to date um at this time last year 1177500 1, and then year to date this year um 150000 so single family homes prices you know dipping down just a little bit but if we take it to the next slide we have some statistics on the condo market so you can see that the median sales price for the condo for last june over this june increased quite a bit um as well as the year to date from 2022 to 2023 now what we're seeing uh, South Maui and West Maui offers quite a few condominiums that allow short-term rentals. So what happens a lot of times, we get a lot of snowbirds that come in. They have been coming for years, whether they spend just two weeks at Christmas or whether they come from January to March. They come enough where they eventually think, you know what, why don't I just buy a place here and rent it out when I'm not here? So we do have a pretty hot short-term rental market. So on average, I normally say about 50% of the condos in both South Maui and West Maui offer or automatically allow short-term rentals. And that's a really big part of the median sales price on the condo side. And why I think that number is still so, so strong um, compared to the, the difference in pricing on the single family home side. Yeah, the condos on Maui, the median sales price is about 500000 So on Maui, it's, I mean, close to a million dollars for condos. Yes, yes. But when you say, you know, short-term rentals, um, you, you know, that's definitely a hot topic here on Oahu. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's talks about trying to extend the short-term anything, you know, below 90 days. 
What is the um, kind of the status on Maui? Is it still 30 days or less is considered short term vacation rentals? Uh, actually, anything below six months is considered a short term rental. So if you were looking for a lease of five months and 15 days, that would be considered short term. There's no minimum necessarily. So you could do one month, uh, one day, one week, one month, but anything under six months is considered short term. Now, there are a couple complexes that have different regulations that they've self-imposed. So there's a couple complexes that while they allow short term rentals, they don't allow anything under 30 days, but there's no hard and fast rule across the board on that. I would say for those ones, it's complex by complex. Wow. Oh, okay. That, that's, that, that's a little bit different. So I, uh, th that's good to know. Always learning something new. Yeah, and, there are a couple yeah. challenges when you're looking at short-term rentals um, here on Maui. There are a couple areas that are dealing with some sea, sea line, um, uh, seashore erosion. So that's one big sort of red flag that we always talk through with our buyers, anybody interested in, per interested in purchasing oceanfront. There's a lot of due diligence to be done, um, complex by complex, you know, how well prepared are they for the work that needs to be done in the future. Some complexes have been, you know, collecting from their owners for years in preparation for the, the adjustments that need to be made and others haven't. And so, you know, each of these is in sort of a different financial state, as well as some of these complexes were built in the 70s and 80s. So we're kind of coming up on, um, you know, a natural time in life where there's some major renovations and major upgrades that need to take place. So definitely um, important to do your due diligence and to sort of work with a realtor who understands the caveats of each of these different complexes and what they entail. We definitely see that here in the Wahoo market as well for the condos that are a little bit older and there's special assessments and things like that coming up for those major repairs that need to happen, namely like plumbing or squalling and things like that. Is that what you're seeing over in the Maui condo market too? Yeah, exactly. Exactly that. Major plumbing work usually needing to be done. And the, just the big ticket item is usually some sort of seawall um, repair, remedy, uh, something having to do with the with the, the seawall in front of all these complexes. Very awesome. So if there were if there were someone that was looking or interested in investing in Maui real estate, what would you would you have any advice or guidance for them? You know, I think at this time in the market with the interest rates being where they are, you're pretty much in it for a long-term hold. It's, you know, you can certainly find something that will maybe allow you to break even, but if you're looking for something that's really, really gold in cash flow, those aren't quite as easier to as easy to find as maybe they were a couple years ago. So I would say if you are looking for something, be ready to hold on to it for a little bit. Um, the equity is certainly um, inevitably going to increase over time. And so because yeah. overall you're seeing pricing is still kind of holding at the higher levels um, for properties in Maui. Yeah, absolutely. We're not expecting to see any significant decrease or decline. The market is still pretty strong in terms of buyers. You know, for a lot of my sellers, if they price things well, the, the it'll move if they're if they're priced fairly and accurately and according to sort of where the market is. Um, but for the sellers that are shooting for, you know, 300,000 over the last sale, those are a little harder to, those are a little harder to find buyers for. So we're seeing buyers being realistic, but still willing to pay what they feel is fair market value for the property. Um, but, you know, if you're in the market, I would encourage you to be patient, uh, know what you want, be able to be, have a little bit of flexibility. Um, but when the right property comes up, be ready to move. There are certain things where we're, certain circumstances where we're still seeing multiple offer situations. In terms of, of the buyer profile, do you see a lot of people from the big island, you know, Oahu, Hawaii, or mainland, you know, foreign countries? Um, well, well, what's like the general buyer profile, you know, over the last couple of months, especially during the summer? Yeah, it kind of depends on what you're looking for, what type of property. You know, we don't get a whole lot of buyers from China or Korea or Japan, not nearly as many as you folks see on Oahu. Uh, but we see a lot of West Coasters relocating. We see a lot of Canadians, actually. The numbers for Canadian buyers have been down a little bit, but traditionally they've been pretty strong. 
um, I still do have a lot of local buyers that are just um, doing doing well where they bought a condo to start and they're ready to move into something bigger. So selling their condo and upsizing into a single family home. So um, yeah, we're, we're kind of seeing not so many outer island relocation though. It's a lot of on island just getting ready to move up into something bigger. I just heard today too that is it some of the resorts over on Maui are they actually building housing for some of their employees and things like that? Have you heard that? I haven't heard that. I know there's a lot of different um, construction plans that are happening, and then there are quite a few that are attempting to happen, but um, our county council isn't giving them the green light just yet. <laughs> oh, I see. And, and then, you know, affordable housing has been a hot topic um, uh, everywhere uh, across all, all islands. And are, are there any, just just generally speaking, you know, are they still building affordable homes or condo units on Maui? Yeah, absolutely. I think in the last several years, there have been several different neighborhoods that have come up Um particularly single family homes, which is incredible. I know there are a couple projects um, on the horizon. There, there's a little delay, but there should be a, a few actually released by the end of this year, or at least the um, reservations will start being taken and applications will be released. So I would say, you know, if you have um, a local buyer out there that can qualify if they need more information, please, please, please have them call someone. They're welcome to call me, but please call a realtor because there's some really, really great opportunities out there. It's great to hear that there are great opportunities for affordable housing because that's so needed and it's such a huge issue for our whole state, you know, for every island, I feel like, um, yeah. But, you know, thank you so much, Erin. And I just, you know, we're coming towards the end of our time and just wanted to ask you if you had any final thought that you would like to share. Yeah, th thanks, Leone. Thank you and Will for having me today, you know. I just wanted to encourage you, whether um, you're buying or selling or whether you're new to the islands or not, just a friendly reminder on how important it is to um, not take for granted that we get to live here. You know, I try and wake up every morning grateful that I get to, you know, spend another day on Maui. So I would encourage you all to be, be cautious of that and be grateful for that. And just that, you know, encourage you to play your part in your community. So learn your street name, um, show aloha to your neighbors, and just encourage you all to be uh, just a really, really great community member. Wow, you've been so awesome. Thank you so much, Erin, for joining us on Inside Hawaii Real Estate. You're amazing, Erin. Thank you so much, and aloha. Aloha. Thank you, guys. Mahalo. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.